In this video I'm going to show you how to manipulate an image using Photoshop. So this is Photoshop CS6, I've got that open. Um, I've got my web browser open here, Google Chrome. I'm just going to search for a picture. Just type in tiger. I'm going to find a picture that's appropriate. Now, uh, one thing that I advise is you are going to um, create a picture that's going to be for the web so you don't want the file size to be too big but don't worry about that at the minute you can see here this picture is really big but I, when I get it into Photoshop I'm going to resize it and that's one of the things I'm going to print screen and show evidence of so I'm going to click on this image view the original image so you need to go all the way to the big image which is this I'm going to right click on it copy the image go back into Photoshop go to file new you can see that it picks up the dimensions of the image that you've copied to the clipboard on the computer. So press OK. Go to Edit, Paste. And now that image is inside Photoshop. So the first thing that I would do if I were you is to resize this picture. And you could show um, screenshots of you doing that. Because you're actually going to get a mark for that. I'll just show you on here. Oops. So here you can see you're going to get a mark for showing that you can resize or crop an image so in here I'm going to go to image image size and you can show yourself going to that so screenshot that I'm going to change it to an appropriate size now if you don't understand pixels you might be a bit wary about well what's an ideal size well if we just have a look at this picture that's in the background this one it looks like a nice size but I'm only 25% zoomed out so if I zoom into this 100% you can see the picture is actually that big that's going to be way too big um, it's 40 megabytes um, in size so it's going to be absolutely huge so I'm going to zoom out you can see it again go to image image size and I'm going to change this to about 500 pixels in width press OK and now zoom into 100% and that's how big the picture is I still think that's a little too big if I'm going to put it on a website so it's just about experimenting with the dimensions that you want the sizes so okay that's quite nice so I've resized my picture and if you've showed evidence of that through the screenshots you can go and get this mark here you will actually get a mark for that the next thing that I'm going to do is apply a filter so something that I might do is for example on this layer I might click down here and I might apply a black and white filter so I could screenshot evidence of me doing that and you can see that I've changed it to black and white now that's evidence enough that'll do just by applying that filter um, and showing that you've resized it will get you these two marks here but if you want to be a little bit clever about it, what you might want to do is this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this layer, I'm going to copy it. So I drag it into there. So I've now got an exact copy of this. They're both black and white because this filter is on top of both of these images. Now if I drag this filter down a layer, now if you imagine how layers are working, this one's at the top this filter layer is behind this image and then the filter layer is on top of the copied um, image so if I take the eye off of this top layer what you're seeing is this filter onto this so if I take the eye off the filter then I'm seeing that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show all of these and I'm going to get a big rubber so this is the rubber tool not that big Let's change it a little bit even more like this that's fine and then on this layer at the top so this layer the top layer I'm going to rub out parts of the picture so I'm going to rub out this bit here and because this filter which is on top of this layer is behind this you'll see that what happens is I'm rubbing this one out and as I'm rubbing it out you can see the black and white one behind it so if I just take these off look you can see all I'm doing is I'm rubbing out this uh, image but behind that image is a filter which you can't see but behind that filter is another image so this is how 
you um, you might have seen before images that are partly in color and partly in black and white well this is how they do it so if you were going to do this I would suggest taking your time zooming in um, getting a smaller rubber to do the finer details so taking your time now if I accidentally rub over something like that you could do the normal edit undo yep, which is fine but let's say I do this so let's say I do that mm, not, not too bad keep going keep going now then yes I could do undo 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 but there's a really good window here called the history window and this tracks everything that you've done well actually it tracks the last uh, 20 things that you've done so I can go back a step so it's like looking at the edit undo yep so I can keep going all the way back through the steps that I've done like that so if I go here I can just trace my way back to this mistake and then I can carry on working from there so that history window is really nice and useful if you make any mistakes I'm going to very quickly whiz through this again I'm not going to make this perfect because um, I don't want to waste too much time on this video but this is something you could do this is not going to get you any extra marks if I'm honest although it could no that's a lie because on the next task you get a mark for using um, multiple layers in fact no ignore that this is not going to get you any extra marks but it will look nice and at the end of the day you want your website to look nice so you could spend a bit of time working on this okay so I'm happy with that it's not brilliant um, the next thing that I need to do is if I save this file save as now you need to make sure that you save it in your um, appropriate folder so you should be saving it in your candidate number folder you should be saving it in controlled assessment and you should be saving it inside images here now call this something sensible so I'm going to call this tiger and you'll notice that it's a PSD file now what that means is that when I save this if I ever open it up again it'll open up in Photoshop and it'll keep all of these layers intact so I can change them again later so I'm going to save it press OK now that's saved but what I want to do now is you can't put PSD files um, on the internet on a website sorry you can't put them on a website you can only put things like JPEGs, PNGs or GIF files so now I need to convert this PSD file into a JPEG why? because the file size is absolutely huge and like I've said the file format PSD is not um, allowed on a website so what I'll need to do is I'll need to go to file and again you get a mark for this here look you get a mark for compressing the file as a PNG okay and you need to screenshot evidence of you doing that so I'm going to screenshot evidence of me going to file save for web and this is a really cool tool where what you can do now is if I go four up you can say right this is what it would look like if it was a gif image it would be 65 kilobytes in file size and it would look like that and if I zoomed in you can see the quality is not brilliant okay if I click here and say well what happens if I changed it to a PNG 24 file right well it's 170 kilobytes now in file size and actually the quality is not brilliant there either um, okay what would it look like if it was a JPEG okay if it was a JPEG oh okay the quality is a little bit better and the file size is brilliant so what about the PNG if I changed it to a PNG 8? Okay. Alright, so you can see if I save this image, the original is 360 kilobytes in file size. If I saved it as a GIF, it'd be 65 kilobytes and it'd look like this. And it'd take 13 seconds to load on a 56 kilobyte per second, kilobits per second um, internet connection. If I saved it as a PNG, it'd be 61 kilobytes in file size, so it's smaller. And the quality is not as good but it's, it's still quite good if I saved it as a JPEG it'd be 39 kilobytes and it'd be quite good and that's a JPEG where the quality is 60% so with a JPEG I can say well what would it be like if I had the JPEG as 100% it would be 106 kilobytes what would it be like if I had a JPEG that was zero in quality would it be 10 kilobytes which is a brilliant file size 
but it wouldn't be very good quality. My suggestion is always have images that are less than 50 kilobytes. So the higher you can take this JPEG, closer to the 50 kilobytes, the higher quality you're going to get, but you're still maintaining a good download speed. So although it says in here, convert it to a PNG, you can actually compress it as a JPEG if that's more appropriate. And in this case it is. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to save it in exactly the same place um, as the PSD file, which is here. Now you won't see the PSD file because I'm saving it as a JPEG, So, it, but trust me, the PSD file is in there. I'm going to call it tiger.jpeg, press save. And now if I go into my folder structure, just to prove to you that both of those files are in there, here 10. Uh, control assessment images there's the PSD file and there's the JPEG file so as long as you have screenshot evidence of resizing and cropping an image applying a filter and compressing that PSD file to a PNG or a JPEG whatever that's fine so yeah if you followed that video you will have gained yourself four marks um, for creating a simple image applying a resize and or crop, applying a filter and compressing it. Now just to say, sorry, you don't have to apply the black and white filter. You can apply any of these filters. Yep, so play around with them if you don't want to just turn your images to black and white. You can show evidence of applying any of these. Okay.